If I wanted to add some depth into this shot, I could use sapphire scan lines, decrease the frequency, and increase or decrease the angle. Maybe keyframe the shift. In fact, for now, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to move it so that she is the focus. I don't really think that would matter because in a second, I'm going to create a mask, but I'm just going to keep it around here. So 5.3, keyframe that, head to the last frame and set that one to 0.5. Let's see how that looks. I think this actually looks better when it's static. So I'm just going to remove these keyframes and leave it like this. So what I can do is create a mask and increase the feather, invert that. I still want my character to be the focus. So that's exactly where I'm going to place this mask. Maybe I should increase the feather because I don't want the edges to be too harsh. So I can soften out the scan line. So maybe something like this, perhaps. Maybe. We'll see. So this is how it looks. Although it's entirely subjective, I do think that this looks better than the original clip. So that was the before and this was the after. Now, what I really wanted to achieve was a vent overlay effect. I don't really know what to call it. So if I set it to 5.2 just to move it up, uh, you can see it looks like we're looking through a vent or a sewer. I don't really know what to call it. In fact, I do have an image, so I'm just going to pull that up. So something like this but on on the floor on the ground looking up i could actually increase the sharpness and yeah that's already looking better i could keyframe the shift again and the reason why is to make it look like we're kind of scurrying through the vent i'm not calling you a rat i promise anyways 5.3 so this is how it looks with some movement not a fan of how sharp these edges look. So let's go for one, uh, not one, let's go for two. Much better. So that's one way you can use sapphire scan lines to create depth. The second way is by using blending modes. I think a lot of people forget that if you add effects onto an adjustment layer and change its opacity or blending mode, it affects the effects that you've added on. I've added on scan lines to this adjustment layer. So if I were to change the blending mode, to something that actually works so maybe lighten you can see it's affecting the scan lines as well so it gives you a nice uh well not nice effect but interesting effect i would say this actually looks better than the original at least when you turn up the uh, frequency so i could go for 100 so usually it looks like this and this is with the blending mode lighten i think it looks much nicer but hey don't limit yourself play around with what works so it could go for difference you, you know totally different effect it kind of looks like, I forgot the effect, I think it was invert, so it's got a bunch of options, uh, it, it looks like that, so if I just decrease the frequency, if it'll work, actually let's go for something lower, you can see it's actually created like an invert effect between, or should I say within these bars, or is it between, I think it's between, yeah, look how cool that looks, that's just me moving the angle, so as I adjust that, it creates an invert effect between them, take a look at this one, multiply that looks awesome so i can use this to put focus on a specific subject so it could be a character or an object but that looks really nice blending modes plus keyframe with the angle or the shift i mean we've got other options as well like shift red green blue you know you can achieve really cool looks with this experiments keep experimenting i always tell people to do that because you might find something new just like i did and the final way to use this effect is well, it's a bit obvious, but you can use it as one frame is. So between transitions, and it's fairly easy to use, but you need to make sure that you're using 24 frames per second or below. If you're going to use something like 30 or higher, it's not going to look good. Please edit on 24 and below. So to use it as a one frame, I just cut it down to one frame long, obviously, and place it between your transition or just between the next clip. And you can actually pair this with other effects so what i like to do and i've seen this effect on a lot of other edits so you could increase the frequency to about 100 search for invert and add it on i mean that already looks perfect you can also change the settings so instead of rgb you go for something like hls i will admit i used to overuse this one framer back in 2021 or 2022 but it works really well especially if you have a time remap or twixter graph that accelerates between the clips and then deaccelerates. So in short, this is very good for impact. And I am going to actually increase it to uh, not 1000, 150. The smaller the scan lines are, the better they look in my opinion. And don't forget, you can also use it as an overlay. 
pretty straightforward. Thank you very much to my monthly supporters as always, and thank you for watching to the very end. I'll see you next time. Peace.